now the, this is the last lecture, then lecture. Yes. Oh. Is it not your No. Maybe it's Judith. Uh -huh. This uh, last lecture, tenth lecture, uh, that is a kind of result of this course that could be considered as introduction to no magia. So uh, the uh, tenth lecture is dedicated to no magia in 21st century. So now it is uh, in the sociology they say that now we are living in the shift, in the transformation from modernity to the postmodernity. So we have identified the modernity as return or revenge of the logos of Sibeli. Now that we could ask uh, what is uh, the logos of uh, postmodernity? What kind of uh, neological um, no logical structure is it? Um, the logos of postmodernity is in some way the finalization of the Sibelian revolution. So that is the mm, kind of, uh, of uh, bringing to the logical end and logical consequence of the previous modernity. So we should not be deceived by the anti-modern anti speech of the postmodernism. Postmodernism is essential in modern. It is the essence of the modernity. It is not alternative. The postmodernism as it is in the French philosophy, first of all, is based on the idea that modernity is not enough. So, modernity is not pure modernity. That began with Frankfurt School when they, say, when they said that we need to enlighten enlightenment. That enlightenment was not really enlightenment, enlightened. so we need to purify the pure modernity and that is the kind of purge of ethical cleansing of modernity of the rests of what was tradition. So postmodernity it is idea to bring modernity to the end, to create the pure modernity. In philosophical, philosophical sense it is idea to gain the pure immanence or the pure matter or the pure body as in the Lozen version. So everything in the modernity, according to the postmodernists, was uh, too much penetrated by the pre-modern, by tradition. So, uh, for example, <coughs> the reason. Reason was, human reason, was a kind of uh, slogan in the fight against the the theocracy against the church, against theology, that was all made in name of the human reason, and that was the vanguard position of the modern, modern, modern fight. But postmodernists, they have uh, discovered that after the victory of the human reason over theology and creating absolutely autonomous um, science and philosophy, uh, they, uh, in new condition, they have encountered a kind of domination, a kind of philosophical fascism. But this time human reason, human brains were considered to be radical dictatorship. So, before that idea was in the modernity to liberate liberalism, liberate human reason from theology. Now it is liberate human being from the reason, because the reason is dictatorship. The reason 
predicts what to do. Uh, it uh, deals with the unbalanced radical hierarchical systems on the classes or the classifications. So uh, uh, now we need to come in the postmodernity with this next stage. Not the liberation of the reason, but the liberation from the reason. That is concept of uh, schizophrenic revolution of Gilles Deleuze and uh, uh, Guattari, Felix Guattari, that was anti edip For example, uh, the concept of Freud was a kind of modern uh, revolution against uh, of ration rationality. So that was uh, as well introduction to postmodernism, because the uh, reason was put under question, under doubt, in order to explain the, the function of brain on reason by irrational motivation of some consciousness. But the Loss and Guattari and the pure postmodern view have discovered that was reflection of the male understanding of uh, the functioning of uh, subconsciousness. And, uh, and I, uh, the complex of Oedipus was a kind of male projection. So they proposed to create female feminist uh, psychoanalysis that uh, will be not uh, affected with some paranoid, typically male concept of irrational desire. So that was idea to, to bring to the, the end all the irrationalism and they have discovered that there are two types of, 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 the, of the psychological system, paranoid one and schizophrenic one. So paranoid one was uh, hierarchical and that was considered, the reason is paranoid uh, according to Delos and Guattari, but schizophrenia uh, when there is a kind of inner split of the self, it's much more feminist, much more uh, e equal egalitarian. So we need to promote schizophrenic attitude as the normative attitude of society, and that is as well the kind of fight against the brain and dictatorship of the brain. So we need to liberate the organs. Uh, or di different organs that they should behave at their will without this um, Hitlerism of mind. So the, the postmodernism is the, the fight against any kind of vertical, uh, vertical hierarchies, not only traditional way, but in the individual way as well. So that is first that was the fight against everything in the sake of individual. And now that is the construction of individual, it's individual in self that is considered to be to Apollonia in our, in our terms. So, that, because the man is vertical, for example, it's, 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 uh, it's not normal. It's, cre it's create a kind of privilege, privilege for the head, for the brain. So it is at the top. It should be uh, uh, may, uh, we should make quite, quite opposite. We should uh, crawl as a, a, a serpent. We we should give we should give the full freedom to our organs and consider uh, our body not as kingdom of the reason, but a kind of parliamentary assembly of the organs that could organize their parties, political parties, vote to take some decision, not only dictated by reason, but promoted and supported by, by the other organs. The, the red, most radical idea was the organs themselves are totalitarian, because they, are too, um, uh, they have too many uh, special, uh, special forms, uh, so they are adapted and adjusted to one mechanical uh, mechanical uh, function, so that we should consider the body without organs. That is the concept. So the body should exist without any form, without any organic state, uh, and that uh, we could achieve during virtual existence. So uh, the, uh, the Ukraine, Ukraine, 
uh, that is the, um, the space, uh, two-dimensional space, uh, and we should like, uh, emigrate into the network in order to fill not with organs but with all our body. So that is rhizoma. Rhizoma uh, is the concept that should uh, replace individual. Rhizoma it is network uh, mankind that uh, is not united and interacting with each other as individual with individual but with organ with organ in, in the completely schizophrenic sense so uh, one hand could uh, to behave itself in its own way the, the other part of uh, so that is um, as well uh, dissipation of the personality with avatars with the names in the network so we could change the gender we could change the age uh, and everything and personality we could dissipate uh, ourselves and that is not only roles because the man in sociology is this is a uh, assembly of the roles so these roles social roles and relational games are dissipated and distributed through the network and there are new kind of rhizomatic re, re, uh, rhizoma uh, rhizome in greek that is the root but not the root of the plant but the root that uh, as potato or mushroom they are um, expanding uh, not in the vertical but in the horizontal uh, um, situation and that is a, a kind of postmodern society uh, that is the next step that is not individual but individual in some way so there is a new new stage of the immanentism and materialism it is not the materialism of the things it is materialism of something that is below the things beneath the things uh, René Guinon called that infracorporal world uh, and this infracorporal, infracorporal world was peopled in the traditional religious understanding by some beings of purely underground beings so that is the kind and uh, the idea to turn the man in the assembly of the diamonds that is idea of um, of Delos and to open the possibility of the spirit living through us and in us, material spirit, to reveal themselves and to behave themselves freely as a kind of parliament of organs or desires, and the machines of desires distributed through the network. That is the kind of destruction of any vertical forms, including in the early liberal or capitalist, capitalist uh, version. Here, there is a um, very, very, a very thin change from liberalism, classical liberalism, first political theory, in post-liberalism. Uh, that is the mixture between uh, communism or Marxism, not defending proletarian or the class struggle, but defending e uh, materialism and e egalitarianism, united with liberalism. So that postmodernism is a kind of cultural Marxism mixed with the uh, liberalism, left liberalism. So that is a new version. Old liberalism operated, dealt uh, with individual, and now that is individual that is coming. So uh, uh, the, the, the normal reason, human reason, is replaced by uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, a network should replace the normal relations, and virtuality is replacing reality. I have dedicated yesterday lecture, uh, presentation of the book of the network warfare, partly to this uh, postmodern uh, horizon, postmodern perspective. So the idea is to replace the, what was in the paradigm of modernity called reality by virtuality. So virtuality is not only reflection, 
of the reality. It is a very interesting moment. In virtuality, there is reflection of reality or translation of the something real in something digital. After that, that is work with digital improvement of the sound, for example, or image, Photoshop uh, working on the photo and so on, or cleaning of the sound in the music, or, and new uh, emulation of the purified image in the reality, printing in the 3D printer, for example, printing back the reality. So, the most important thing is the autonomy of what is digitalized. So, this reality <coughs> that is uh, separated uh, the number, num numbers in the computer, uh, it is considered the most important thing. For example, the credit cards. So, they are numbers, the something electronic, that is calculation process. Uh, we put money in, on the card, we take money. So, it comes through virtual instance. Here is the possibility to make with our money everything, because they, they are not material. And virtuality, it's an uh, idea when we don't make these two kinds of operations too often. We don't transform reality into virtuality and don't emulate reality back. So, we are satisfied with staying with credit card, not putting the, the money, not taking the money. We have credit card. And we are satisfied, we are happy. So not trying to how it works, not trying to, to put it back. We, we, we see how it works, so we are uh, happy with having a credit card. So, offline relations between, for example, in dating, there is the photo, there is the photo of girl, of man, I presume normal relations, uh, and uh, there is uh, online encounter, meeting, um, uh, and there is offline. Offline could be uh, disappointing, uh, but um, uh, when you prove, you testify of the, the quality, the reality of the uh, girl or, or, or young man you have seen in uh, uh, internet, in the reality, it's a kind of emulation of this virtual personality. But we are invited in the postmodernity to accept these virtual images as they are, to live in there, living in the, in, not making this proof or test how they are, because it, and that is you could create your personality uh, and after in the, in the future you could create your body and that has already begun. Cre emulation of body to printing on the three printers the different organs of uh, this is purely avatar <coughs> or for example uh, amelioration of, of the body now with botox for example uh, fighting against the aging or uh, making some artificial adjustment to, to women figure or male figure as well in modern Western society. So, there is a kind of emulation of body. So, and where is in that process, in that process, we are losing a kind of individual. We, are, we, 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 we became the, the combination of the parts. So, we could um, be uh, transformed as the, uh, in, in the uh, uh, numbers and calculation or sequence, and we could be emulated. So we could be this. We could disappear in virtuality and reappear in the reality, passing, maybe ameliorating some some features. So that is not only reflection. That is something when virtuality uh, becomes. Uh, primordial becomes <coughs> be, become something that gets first. So we could, for example, emulate something that doesn't exist in reality. For example, chimera cyborg on some uh, chimera, some something that is not so, uh, centaurs or Rusalka in Russia villa. We could uh, print in the future, and there are fantastic films. Of uh, about that, we could print something that 
that is not a reflection of the reality, that is production of virtual fantasy. And we could people the world with these images. And in this some situation, it, when we first we received the credit card, we were not so confident with them. We tried to, to, to have some, uh, uh, some mission in order to take money to, to, be, to be sure that they are there, that we could... Uh, but now, little by little, we, we are happy with having card. We, we don't testify anymore. So, with, we, we have more and more confidence in something virtual, and we are replace, uh, replaced, uh, 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 we, are, we are transferred into the real virtuality, and we become more and more virtual. So, artificial intelligence, uh, it is the kind of uh, limit of it. So, there will be not any more uh, separate uh, individuals, there will be a kind of network, because artificial intelligence is not like one clever guy or, 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 or girl, it is network. It is all, uh, network distributed through many computers, uh, and that is working. That is neuro 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 uh, network that is capable to create something new, to imagine something new. Uh, there are two different uh, two different kind of artificial intelligence. Weak. Uh, artificial intelligence and the strong artificial intelligence. Weak and, uh, 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 artificial intelligence is already already constructed. Uh, it is a kind of databases of many knowledges of, of, of humanity put in the digitalized way. There are great masses of books, of knowledges, uh, technology all present, uh, present present in the computers and we could immediately access this book immediately and um, they are inside of memory uh, so if we uh, if we could grant the permanent access to that we are inside of this weak artificial intelligence that could make calculations instead of us make comparison translations of languages, so transmitting as well some semantic elements, and that is uh, ameliorating each day Google Translate from English into the English better. With other languages not so, but with English better and better. So, uh, we uh, uh, could see how this weak uh, uh, intel artificial intelligence progresses. But there is strong artificial intelligence, its appearances awaited, anticipated for 2020, 25 years, so it's like it rests not so much time, uh, and that is uh, called singularity moment. Singularity moment that is appearance of the strong artificial intelligence that will be completely comparable with human. So it will be uh, not programmed uh, operations, but neural network. A uh, neural network is the is algorithm, mathematical, that could create something that wasn't from, uh, from, the, uh, from the beginning was put in. So that is self-development form of calculation. And the, the simplest uh, uh, neural network uh, depends absolutely from operator, but developed neural uh, network are independent. More and more they become independent from operator, so they could arrive at the conclusion that wasn't planned by operator. In that, that manner human reason uh, functions. So that is something that is autonomous but following some rules, because human reason as well is following some rules. And this singularity process, uh, singularity moment, is, uh, uh, is considered to be the shift, the greatest shift in the human history, when there will be not only human reason in the earth or in the space. So there will appear, there will appear something comparable to us, but the next, next evolution, next step of um, uh, 
human progress. That will be post-human species, post-human beings. And there is in modern philosophy a tendency that is called acceler accelerationism. Accelerationism that invites us to bring this singularity movement quickly, quick, now. So, accelerates the movement toward the singularity uh, situation that is uh, studied and done uh, by great corporation, by Google corporation that invests in Microsoft, and the other, there is as well hedging process. They invest uh, billions in the creation of artificial uh, intelligence and the billions as well hedging in the security, trying to, to identify the threats of this. So that is hedge funds, uh, funds for uh, artificial intelligence and the development pro pro projects for artificial um, intelligence. So. At the same time, there, the concept of what is human is changed in the postmodernity. So, postmodernity is going toward posthuman as a new, new step in evolution, because it, uh, modernity is based on the concept that human being appeared as a kind of progress of beast in some moment. So, singularity, that's the next step. That was the uh, development as a beast, after that development as a man, after that development as a machine. But artificial intelligence is not machine. It's something different. And what is, is interesting <coughs> that in order to, to, to have artificial intelligence, we need uh, to have to understand that our brains as well are something artificial. So we could repeat uh, our human brains only when they are considered to be something material, mechanical, and that is precisely the science of cognit cognitivism, the conscious, the study of conscious body, conscious problem, trying to emulate the function of human reason. But in order to facilitate this, we need to make, to turn uh, present human in the machines that will facilitate this process. And that is precisely the, the, the case. And now the present human being are more and more like uh, the other. So they are, we, uh, they, we, we are more and more artificial because political correctness is a new kind of totalitarianism. They try to persuade us how it's necessary to think, that what is normative way of thinking, and praising the liberty and freedom, at the same time we become less and less free. And any, any, kind, any challenge to that process is regarded as a crime, as a mind crime, a crime of opinion. For example, if you don't agree with that, you are fascist. You try to to uh, to, to defend something that, uh, for example, Auschwitz or Stalinist. That's the same. Uh, so you could not challenge evolution. You could not challenge the progress. It's for example, you could not say stop. Let us conserve what is it and the history hysterical reaction of American society against Trump victory is a demonstration of how intolerant progressists are. So Trump is not alternative to that. He, 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 he don't, doesn't plan to stop the, uh, the researches in artificial intelligence or he doesn't, doesn't uh, uh, protest against the gay prides and so on. He is very tolerant, but he is less progressive as it needed. So he is fascist. So we need. So there are Russians who are fascists behind him, uh, and, and that, that is the story with uh, well, uh, 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 no well. So uh, if you're not progressist, you're enemy of, pro of progress. So and 
all the consequences we could uh, see in the prohibition of my book in Amazon in the free world where everybody has absolutely right to express everything except if that is not uh, if uh, is something that challenges the status quo so yeah uh, uh, you are free uh, and you are completely uh, liberated to be liberal right, left, central, liberal, but you are not free not to be liberal. If you are not liberal, it's suspicious. Something, something maybe you are a terrorist or fundamentalist or, or Russian or, or Trumpist and, and, and so on. So, and that is now, it is caricatural. We see how it, this propaganda, kind of political totalitarian propaganda work, works, with no reason at all, because everything now is uh, virtual. For example, Russian intervention in the American elections, they are virtual. They, they, there is no proof, and they could not prove in the, in the world of network. There is uh, repeated, repeated sentences that is considered to be a kind of algorithm. So everybody cites Mm, uh, New York Times or Washington Post as if it is the truth. So, the, but it is algorithm. So, it is emulation of the of, of the status quo that is that could be completely with no relations with the reality, or, or you could easily exaggerate something, the little little element. You could combine. For example, I'm giving many interviews to the Western press, but only the, the, the fragments uh, that could that coin, correspond to what they expect from myself are, are shown. Uh, for, uh, for example, I gave to BBC interview that uh, Russian oligarchs have financed Hillary Clinton campaign. No, no, no mention. That uh, when I was asked uh, whether uh, Russia intervened in the Trump elections, I have said, uh, uh, answered no. They say yes. So uh, it is um, if if they receive completely opposite reaction, they don't care. So they they emulate what they need. So they that is a kind of emulation that independent from. Uh, previously distracted and processed information. Th that is so uh, in mo postmodernity, the information gets first. And information you could you could imagine, you could combine. So nobody could verify if we see the image, if we read something. So if it repeated, if it is distributed in the many other uh, agency, that is the truth. So it is emulation and not reflection. And a metaphysical sense that is shifted from the real to the virtual. So the virtuality is more important than reality, because it is not reflection of reality, but the basics of emulation of the reality. Uh, and there is indignation of the old uh, style people uh, who say let's defend reality in front of virtuality but it is impossible because the reality was uh, brought by the modernity because in the world of tradition of uh, Apollonian Logos ideas existed Ideas were the real beings, or spirit, or God, or something hidden, or something heavenly, or something divine, existed as the basic ontological argument for the reality. So, without God, no reality. Reality took its being from the fact of being created by God. So, creation was the ontological explanation of the reality. And when we have made a step from the Logos of Apollo and the spiritual basis of the reality, when we have accepted 
the reason as such, the man as such, the world as such, nature as such, as substance, without the author. We have already cut the relations with the metaphysical basis of the existence. So that what reality is virtual. That is why this shift from the reality to the virtuality is possible. Metaphysically speaking, we could not defend reality without saving first spirituality. Because this metaphysical foundation of the reality was not real, was pre-real. Was ideas exist in the reality, eternal idea of the thing. Without, if we could cut that, if we deny that, and we have the things, but the, the things as reality is not real in the, in the last sense. It is already something virtual, something emulated, something, it is simulacrum and not the thing. And virtuality, it is the last conclusion of this process. So in postmodernity, nothing new. It, it, is, it seems to be very new, and very, very modern, very, very mm, uh, unweighted. Uh, uh, but it is logical conclusion of the modernity. So, if we consider now that uh, what is the well, uh, no logical analysis of postmodernity, we should uh, we should recognize that it, that is not something new comparing with the modernity, but is final station, final phase of modernity. So, when uh, we have spoken about the logos of Sibylle, so the postmodernity is the absolute domination of logos of Sibylle. So, logos of Sibylle uh, was expanding during modernity, and now it is already expanded. So, there is the difference of no, uh, the moments of Noamachia, when there is a fight and uh, when the fight is over. So that is a kind of kingdom of scarlet woman in the Christian eschatological sense and full domination of uh, great mother in its complete version. That is why there is feminism now. Uh, some words about feminism. There could be different form of feminism. Not uh, modern feminism as well is, is different. But I would like to accent, accentuate that there could be uh, the feminism that I'm calling Hekata uh, feminism. That is based on the very special, special figure of great goddess Hekata, Gekata. Uh, that was in the, um, in, the, in the Greek history, an early Greek uh, uh, history with Hesiodos, uh, um, described as the goddess that gives every, every fruit, every desired thing. But when Hesiodos uh, uh, mentioned what the Hekata gives, he has said the wisdom, uh, the bravery, the victory in fight, uh, and the cattle. And there was no mention of agricultural crop. So that was Hekata in the original sense, was Turanian goddess, uh, was the kind of feminine archetype of Turanian type. Afterwards, they uh, were associated with uh, Persephone or Demeter and put into the realm of night and the underground. But originally, Hecata uh, wasn't uh, wasn't ketonic deity. That was heavenly, uh, feminine, female figure, and Hecata feminism. It is the dignity of the woman that reflects 
patriarchal values, as Athens, the other, other deity, Greek. Athens uh, is pure, uh, pure state of what is purely uh, patriarchal. So it is wisdom of the priests and the uh, victory uh, and heroism of the warrior. So that was Hecata feminism. It may be, it could be, return to the Indo-European feminine principle uh, from the um, wrong or deviated form of patriarchate, materialistic patriarchy. So Hecata feminism is a restoration of the dignity of the woman as the friend and ally of the man in the European man. That is a kind of Indo-European feminism that is against the logos of Sibeli because it is glorification of feminine principle of uh, purely in the European laws. So that is uh, interesting uh, that in uh, Hindu tradition that is concept of Shakti. Of Shakti is not something that goes against the male principle. It is a kind of power of this male principle. That is Shekina as well in the uh, Kabbalah. So that is feminine principle of light and not tonic deity. But that is not the case of uh, today feminism because uh, postmodern feminism uh, is uh, absolutely anti Indo European and purely Sibelian. Uh, and that is not. Uh, beginning of the liberation of the woman is the kind of total destruction of the man that began with the modernity. So materialistic uh, limits put on the man and uh, discreditation of the priesthood, the monks and the warriors as types, that was already the, uh, the victory of the matriarchate and uh, bourgeois type is matriarchal as such, and when women in the modern world pretend to, uh, to have power, that is, the f as uh, with uh, Deleuzean metaphysics, is not something new, it's finalization of the process. So the power of, uh, of Sibylle is today open and manifest. And uh, uh, interesting remark that with feminism, woman, um, uh, uh, traditionally, a woman can, uh, can expect the happiness. It could happen, uh, ha uh, happiness. It could happen, it could not. It depends from some transcendental moment. Uh, the woman can meet the right man, or and, uh, and have the right babies and right families and be happy, or could not. That depends. But feminism, modern civilian feminism, say, let's say goodbye to this wait, uh, waiting, waiting of happiness. Uh, the happiness, feminine happiness is illusion. It is more uh, dreams that is not real. So there is no such kind of women happiness, uh, and you should every woman should should say goodbye to that. There is no happiness. That is illusion. That is patriarchal uh, trick in order to keep uh, women uh, under control. You will never have happiness, women, uh, feminine happiness. But instead, you can have power. So you exchange you exchange the problematic feminine happiness and non problematic fight for power and will for power. So that is not a claim for more happiness or more equality. That is the fight for power in the society, and that is almost already succeeded. So we are not in the beginning, in the first stage of feminism. That we are in the last stage of feminine, and this fight for power and the concept of woman as power, 
that reflects the essence of, of, of feminine principle and tradition. Because uh, the, the pure state uh, in the Indian tradition, uh, the Purusha, the male principle, is wisdom, with no power. It is pure light of, of thoughts. And the power is already feminine. But this liberation of the power from the wisdom, its power as itself, a kind of blind power, that is what is uh, going on with present day feminism. So that is finally arriving to such absolute feminine power, woman loses herself, it's her nature and her, her content. She becomes absolutely blind might of, of, of some, some that uh, Stoicians uh, called uh, a kind of fatality. So there is the, the blind force of things themselves, the pure gravity, pure, pure uh, m m matter, matter in the, in the state of no orientation. So no, no more happiness but new power. And emasculation and disappearance of men. So men should be should disappear. They they lose men in that such situation. Their position, the archetype, and then um, the idea of um, recognition of homosexuality as the norm in the Western society is the end of the man. Is the end of the balance uh, between the genders that is destroyed, so everything is optional, so you have no uh, the, these two poles, and that is a victory of Sibylle. The victory of Sibylle that is now open and manifest, not only um, implicit as in the modernity, but explicit as uh, now. And uh, we could um, uh, so now we are coming to post-liberal. Uh, so when the liberalism, the first political theory, is left alone, there is no second, no third. And when they try to exclude fourth political theory as possibility, so the first political theory, theory is as well changed in kind of post-liberalism. There is no more individual. That is, po di that there is the individual something divided, something atomic, as atom wasn't atomic. Atom, when he, it was discovered, uh, it was uh, um, as well recognized as something that you could uh, divide more. So that is not atomic. Atom is undivided, undividable, indivisible, indivisible. If there is something divisible, that is not atom. So, but you still call atom something that, that is divi the, the divisible, so you, you still call individual something that is not anymore considered to be individual, indivisible. So it is something already uh, rhizomatic. So, uh, and that is transformation, that goes uh, with globalization. Globalization destroys any kind of, of society, including destroys modernity. So liberalism uh, is devoid of any uh, of any kind of national boundaries, borders. It is pure cosmopolitanism. There is no race, no ethnos, no no society. Everybody could live in every in every in every point uh, of the space, and that is. Not uh, today it is the freedom of the individuals, but tomorrow that will be the freedom of the networks. So, because the, the matrix, the kind of uh, matrix with artificial intelligence and uh, with bodies emulating by the necessity. So, the, the concept of body as well uh, could change, but we are promised to have immortality instead but uh, immortality of the machine, because the machine cannot die. Machine could be adjusted or decomposed or recomposed. So uh, uh, machine that doesn't die. And when we say uh, that uh, we be we become immortal in the physical way, in the immanent way, so in that moment 
we stop to be human. And that is singularity moment that is appointed for some years in front of us. So we are living not in the hundreds, two hundred years before singularity. We are living close to the singularity. Some, um, uh, uh, some questions concerning what is Russia in that. So Russia, we should not mis uh, mistake. Russia is conservative society that um, try to delay the process of described before. So Russia is not alternative, present day Russia. It is a kind of uh, trying to stop or delay the movement in one way, in that way. That is anti-acceleration of power. So we say not so, so quickly. Our society, our president, our government says not so quickly. The direction is good, but not now. So that is purely conservatism. That is not proposition to go in other sense, restore Apollonian laws. That is pure inertia. Not yet. Not now. That's all right, quite right, but let's not so quickly. Let us die calmly. Uh, that is a kind of purely irresponsible, but very sane, as instinct reaction against postmodernity. But the most radical formulation of Russian logos today in modern Russian Federation is defense shy is very shy defense of real reality. So the the best the best and bravest in Russia pretend to defend reality against virtuality. So they try to save materially, they are materialists, absolutely, and um, in some modernists, absolutely, uh, but they don't want to make the last shift, the last step in that direction. There is strong traditionalist uh, feeling in the people there is in our church um, radical radical group that uh, protest against the status quo, basing on Mount Athos, basing on the elders' tradition, uh, Starzi uh, uh, elders, but that is absolutely marginal minority that have, has no influence on, on the society. They are considered to be completely crazy because our society is archaeo-modern. It is modernist in the old sense. It cannot and doesn't want accept postmodernity, but no will, no desire, no capacity, no thought to return or to go to the uh, pre-modern Logos. So that is bad news, I, I, I presume, because it seems quite different from outside. From outside, Russia is conservative revolutionary uh, power that fights against the West, against all that. It's not so. Um, maybe we should not uh, should should not stress too much at this point, but. Um, but Russia, that is the great possibility, because our design and our people is bearer of this catechonical mission. And we could see that in the direction of the people. We have Russian design. The Russian design is based on the Dionysian, much more than Apollonian logos. And, uh, but uh, it is imprisoned. Our identity is imprisoned. And this imprison uh, and, uh, uh, imprisonment uh, is not only liberalism of 90s. 
That was as well communist period of Sibelian domination. But it, that was as well the late Romanov Sardom that was modernist, archaeomodern, pro-Western, and so on. So Russia is in trouble as a logos, as people, as design, as existential horizon. But uh, nothing is lost when something rests. Uh, when uh, nothing is lost, when there is something that is not lost. As Kurzo Malaparte, one anarchist, has said, nothing is lost when there is something that is not lost. So uh, I think that we are in a situation that is structurally close to the situation of certain people. We have different scale, different power, different space, different number of population, but the problem is the same. And uh, Russia could not be regarded as the answer or alternative to what is going on. It is only the other place where the no mafia still continues uh, with domination of the civilian laws. So we are inside of Siberia. We are not outside. That may be was remarked by Milos Tsarnansky and his final result of his book that Russia is good, but that is not the answer for Serbian quest for identity. That it's Milos Tsarnansky's um, results or summary, or, uh, it's, it's a tragic one because uh, Serbs become kind of in exile, in permanent exile with no motherland left for, for them. But all the hopes of, on Russia should be measured with this pessimistic, but very open uh, solution of Milos Tsarnansky. Because, because he loved Russia, yeah, Serbian loved Russia, and that is good. But when we have too much anticipation, incorrect expectation, and we could miss uh, the question and unity in fight with something that already accomplished and perfect. So that is very important to, to, to Serbs and to all, all the fighters for identity to know that uh, Russia fights, Russia is not yet uh, defeated formally, because our people is, because it exists. But we have so great problem with Russian laws, we could not yet start to continue the situation when our effort to create Russian philosophy was cut drastically by communists. So we are outside of the place where really philosophy begins. We are outside. And this place is not attained, not, uh, uh, not reached yet. So we, we are fighting to go to this moment uh, because of great damage we had during last hundred years. We could not restart the process. So uh, in Russia today there is pure social madness. We could not speak with nobody. There are, as people, we are very good and open and very Christian, but with as a kind of bitter of some intellectual tradition, it's almost zero. With so big people, so few people capable concretely to think, it is inimaginable. That is, it is a kind of deep dogmatical sleep, not dogmatical in the positive sense, with adogmatical, modern postmodern sleep, conservative sleep of the people. So we are sleeping, but that is a good thing that we could be uh, awake. Let's hope. So, um, but if we now if we, uh, go to the Next uh, moment, uh, what is the problem of the postmodernity? 
The postmodernity is the problem of Dionysus. Because we are dealing with a kind, we could not appeal to the logos of Apollo, Apollo in direct, the directly, in direct way. There is no possible, because it is out of reach of our understanding. That has disappeared long, long ago as such, with the end of the Middle Ages, maybe earlier. So, we are dealing, we have only the, the figure of Dionysus, that is the sun inside of the night. So, that is hidden, hidden intellect. So, that is hidden logos, being in the hell, but not being the hell. So, being inside of the night, but not belonging to the night. Being inside of the world, world of Sibili, but not being the part or function of the world of Sibili. And uh, I'm calling that in the completely other, uh, other type of mm, uh, philosophical mm, uh, direction, the radical subject. Radical subject is the subject that is in the center of the night, not being the night. So, uh, but there is the problem of the black double of Dionysus, because there, there is something titanic that imitates Dionysus, and that is a kind of his mirror, or his double as Atis or Di, uh, Di, uh, Adonis is the uh, black double of Dionysus. And the problem is how make distinction between them. That is the problem of simulacrum, and in the religious sense the problem of Antichrist. Because Antichrist is not a uh, scarlet woman herself, it is not Sibylle, it, it's creation going from the abyss, and it pretends to be Christ. So the problem of Antichrist, the problem of uh, um, simulacrum, or the problem of double of Dionysus is the central problem of postmodernity. Because it pretends to be a radical subject, it pretends to be this figure of Dionysus in the center of that. And uh, there is, uh, that is not Christ. A radical subject is not Christ. Christ is a uh, heavenly God uh, and man as well. But that is something that is quite different. And Dionysus is the, the, the figure uh, that is the really problematic, and uh, uh, I have, I have, uh, I gave the name for one of my book, the radical subject, and it's double. So that is the problem of Dionysus in other world words. So we need to find this point that is in the night and doesn't belong to the night, and we should mistake it for its parody that exists close to it. So that is metaphysical explanation of uh, um, knowledge or Naumachia in the 21st century. And um, I think that is the deepest analysis that could, could be given to situation. And to, to, to finish uh, this course of lectures, we could ask ourselves where the place of Serbia is in this last moment uh, of the Mahia. That is an open question, uh, and we could not respond, answer it abstractly. So it is up to Serbian people to decide this place. Uh, it is very important to define the, the space and normachian, knowledge, knowledgeable space to make this analysis to 
carefully identify the main main uh, figures, main tendencies, but uh, that depends on the decision. And what is important? Decision is possible always up to the moment when the singularity comes. So we have very limited time for decision. Be having design, design being there, it is always open possible possibility to decide in one or the other direction. So the choice is possible when there is human. Human is there when design is. But I think that if we will, if we will be irreversibly replaced by artificial intelligence and devoided of our death, and that is the, uh, the, the condition of existence of design, according to Heidegger. So we will, we will cease to be what we are, and we will lose irreversibly the possibility of decision. Now we have small amount of time in front of us and uh, because something that is approaching is more terrible and horrible than the death or torture or, or catastrophe, much more terrible. That's the end of the human design as we know as the result of the not correctly taken decision. According to Heidegger, European design, Western design, has decided not to be. And that is definition of the modernity and postmodernity. Has decided not to be and not to awake in the, the night, in the, in the middle of the night, where we are. So, uh, that is why he said only God could save us in the last interview, because decision was wrong and was already taken. Multiplicity of design that is based on Naomachia uh, preserves the possibility to decide otherwise. If the West has decided, I don't think, I think that this kind of decision not to exist was taken uh, for us, for Serbs and for Russians, by the other. That was not our decision. And uh, we didn't decide finally. So we should do it. We have time, very small amount of time, to make this decision. And that is the end of the Ten lectures of the Naumachia as introductory course for this study. Yeah, uh, sorry, I'm a bit of a bore, so I'm just <coughs> the one who's asking the question. Uh, so you said something that uh, ideas never die; ideas merely slumber. Right? I can use Che Guevara for this. When the CIA agent came to shoot him, he said, kill me, you fool, you're only killing a man, because ideas are eternal. So nothing is, is, is that as it, as it is. So I would just uh, point out a couple of things. You said that uh, liberalism is tolerant and it allows you to be free to be liberal, either left or right liberal, centrist liberal, but everything outside of this is not allowed. But I would argue that uh, after Trump, uh, this is even, not, even this is not the case. If you're a right-leaning liberal, you are not allowed to be. Because we see people like uh, these internet personas who have started popping up, like Jordan Peterson, Simon Lacad, Malianopoulos, Ben Shapiro, Trump himself. They are people who are Sam Harris, the, the atheist philosopher. They are all uh, defending uh, the individual against the individual. And they are defending liberalism against progressivism. And they are not allowed to speak. And they're called fascists. And you also have some uh, more marginal figures like uh, Richard Spencer and Jared Taylor who are nationalists and they are defending nationalism, but they are even more marginalized than these guys who are liberals in a sense. Uh, and uh, what I what think, what think is fascinating for me is 
that uh, the, th the ideas which you have espoused here are reflected and anticipated in American uh, pop culture in some way. So, for example, I would suggest, which I suggested to your colleague Valery Krobin uh, when he was here to, to uh, give lectures, that you see the, the TV show made by the HBO is called Westworld and uh, the film called Blade Runner 2. Uh, where the, the moment of singularity is clearly represented. In Westworld, it, it's amazing, basically an amusement park, uh, which is, emulates the cowboy Old West, uh, and uh, the human players in real life play against cyborgs, and they're free to kill them, to rape them, or to be a good guys if they want. Uh, and the cyborgs slowly start to develop consciousness. So this is the Westworld, and it's symbolic. It's called Westworld, located in the Western uh, you know, cowboy lifestyle, and it's representing only singularity. Uh, the uh, Blade Runner uh, one is uh, a movie about uh, clones uh, who are being eliminated by humans because they are starting to multiply rapidly, and there is a, f uh, a situation where a clone gave birth to another clone, which is not supposed to happen. And this also explores the, the limits of what is to be human. This is also not a moment of singularity, so I advise you to check this out. And uh, also Demolition Man, which is a film uh, where Sylvester Stallone plays the key role. And you have him and Wesley Snipes, so the um, archetypical uh, uh, Dionysian figure, the policeman who is a radical subject, and his counterpart Wesley Snipes, who is the criminal, the Adonis, who, you know, takes, mm. who kills everyone and is a criminal. And they get unfrozen. Uh, in the future where uh, the world is basically civilian. You have police officers when they encounter Western slaves, they say uh, we are policemen, we are not trained to deal with this kind of violence. Uh, and you have all the, 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 everything is virtual, you, you will see the movie is pretty good, explains this dynamism moment. And uh, the thing which I would suggest to, to you and all uh, your, your entire team is to explore the universe of Warhammer 40k. So this is a, a fictional universe uh, which was propagated by American nerds and geeks, which basically is located 40,000 years in the future, where I believe uh, mankind uh, espouses this, which you have uh, told us, the Apollonian logic, but on a galactic scale. Uh, after the dark age of technology, where the uh, cybers you have an uprising, and then the emperor of mankind uh, comes up to be the savior and you have a clear hierarchical structure with the Adeptus Astarte who are warriors, you have the priests, you have everything. So I would suggest that you check this out. So that's that's uh, basically it. I think this is all I wanted to say. Yeah, that's it. So. Um, is it possible for me to dovetail off of what he said and you can just answer both questions? Oh, oh sure. Uh, there is something that he said really struck a chord with me. I think there's always been an element of uh, let's put it out there before we actually do it and science fiction has been a, a, a medium of that for a long time. Um, it's not just the stuff that he's talking about, the singularity. I mean the most popular example I guess of that is, is the Terminator movies um, but also Black Mirror. Um, a lot of the best science fiction was written by people in the know, like H.G. Wells, who was uh, involved himself personally in uh, some of these ideas and societies and so forth that uh, put forth this idea of, uh, of uh, a linear progression of mankind until, you know, the end of history, for lack of a better way of putting it. Um, it, it it's really fascinating when when you look at it, but also a lot a lot of the figures who, on the surface at least, would not be in opposition to anything that that's been said here, are still people who are within uh, within accepted boundaries and don't go beyond that because they wouldn't be able to function. And, and they wouldn't be able to have a, 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 a paycheck if they went beyond that. And they're also, in their own way, put forth as an alternative. I, 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 uh, specifically Ben Shapiro, um, that professor in Canada who's, like, who's becoming like an alt-right celebrity now. Uh, these are people, I think, who are 
uh, in their own way simulacra who are put out there as, as uh, alternatives to the to the mainstream when and actually I, I don't think they are that in any way shape or form I think what we're facing is something that kind of like um, in 1980 in 1984 with Goldstein puts forth its own enemies and gives that to people who oppose it so so just what may uh, may just interrupt you, sure, please. You this what you said, and which now it said uh, it really pictures very good how human mind started to function. Your first impressions and your first associations to whatever was said was American subculture and films from Hollywood, which says enough about the corruption of mind. Yeah, well, that's our frame of reference. I mean, no, unfortunately, this is what well, there are so many references. So, but th there's, there's uh, another thing which I wanted to say: a ray of hope exists even in this virtuality. So, we have this video games which kids play a lot. So, there's one thing called Dragon Age, a really popular RPG game. So, basically, you have a total freedom to choose your hero as ever, as whatever you want. I mean, it can, he can be an elf, a dwarf, a human, male, female. Uh, gay, straight, whatever you like. You could be a bad guy, you get whatever. So you were given total freedom by the developer of the game to be whatever you like in the game. Uh, but when they have the statistics out, it showed that 80% of the players play the human male noble who had like an Apollonic figure, a good guy. And when they started uh, putting more and more of these innovations, like you have transgender uh, players inside, NPCs, uh, etc. Uh, the sales of the game started to drop, and by Dragon Age 3, the game flopped on the market. So, uh, even these kids, or not necessarily kids, so people who play video games or are immersed in this virtual reality, uh, even though they are immersed in it, they do not necessarily embrace the civilian logic within it. I agree, and that is confirmed as well by my observation uh, in the university. So, uh, the younger population that is supposed to be under more influence of liberalism because in uh, Russian university liberalism prevails absolutely, absolutely, as pure liberal ed education. But, uh, and we presume that younger should be more liberal. That wasn't the case in nothing, in nothing. So they could have. Uh, uh, modern appearance with some kind of the sign of modern culture, punk culture or hipster, but they react and they respond in absolutely traditional uh, way. So, uh, uh, as well, for example, there, from the 1960s, there was a kind of study, sociological study, how Russian population uh, consider the nature of Russia. Uh, it is it Western country, or it is Eurasian Orthodox civilization. That was the the, the question that was put every year after 97, 96, mm -hmm. and I, I I'm following that every year. Very strange. There is no difference at all. No difference at all. Uh, Seventy-two percent is uh, in favor that Russia is Orthodox Eurasian civilization, but there are also three generation, three generation millennials as well. So three generation, and that is not communist or there is no propaganda. Respond in Yeltsin time, seventy-two, in Putin time, seventy-two, no more, no less, uh, seventy-two person. So. There is a kind of stability in, 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 the, in the people, in the children, in the young population. And uh, I have uh, um, remarked that uh, uh, working six years in a university, that that was a kind of growth of patriotism, of normal reaction in the, in the young, in the younger, uh, youngest people. So uh, that is very, very interesting remark. So, um, there is a progress on one side of civilian formalization that affects society, but at the same time, there is a kind of constancy, 
on the other side. And that is precisely, uh, uh, precisely the hope. Uh, the hope is not in the future or in the progress. The hope there, there will rest something, something in children, something is, is grown up man, something maybe in, 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 in different parts of, of society. Now that is growth of um, uh, uh, right movement, nationalist movement in Europe. And that is growth. Growth in Germany, in Austria, in, Austria, in Italy, in France, everywhere. It is under huge control. That is not alternative. This only delay. Delay is not something really for political theory, but that creates a crazy kind of space. And for example, I would say half of this nationalist movement, half, uh, is pro Russian, is pro Putin, is anti American, and the elite reads for political theory. Uh, so that is not accomplish something, but that is process. Mm -hmm. The same I think with Russia. So that is not by the chance where that force political theory is born in Russia. It's not only personal achievement. That is a kind of I try to 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 to, um, uh, to express what is the main feature of our tradition. I consider myself to be the voice of. Russian tradition is not nothing. I, I try to to have nothing individual. No, uh, so that is a kind of um, expression, of something that reflects the state of design. Uh, I'm doing that consciously, but it is shared by the huge amount of Russian society, and they they uh, agree immediately with the truth. It is very hard then to, to, to make them believe in, in the lie. So uh, th there are many, many signs of hope, including in the Western society. Officially, th th we have lost everything. But if we, deep, uh, if we go deeper, it's not so the case. Uh, and uh, the same for Asian society. We could overestimate, for example, Iran or Turkey or Islamic states. There, uh, there is alienation, but there are. The very sane and healthy uh, tendency in uh, Islamic society. The, uh, so, but we are uh, the conclusion maybe that we are in the same situation. We shouldn't regard the other as pure enemy. The enemy is inside. The enemy is logos. We should fight against that, not against one people or other. So uh, maybe I, I have suggested after the election of Trump. Trump the concept of vertical geopolitics. Vertical. There is horizon, horizontal geopolitics, the states, the, the civilization, but there is as well something that uh, threatens everybody, everybody, every one of us. So American people is as well involved in their, in their struggle, and there are some saying, maybe a little bit crazy, uh, I agree, as everything in America, but there is a kind of reaction. And the waters of Trump, they, they have testified that there is something that um, at least resistance. So uh, maybe strange. Uh, I participated in Alex Jones' show. That that is uh, <laughs> so so uh, a, a kind of strange. But they are sane. They are, uh, they, they look insane. But they are uh, more sane than, than the people who rule America. They are. Well, criminals, really, and that are very, uh, maybe cha chaotic people, but with good intentions, finally. Uh, and I think that that is important. And uh, uh, there is operative value of Serbian diaspora, because Serbs are much more normal <laughs> than others. Uh, and living in the other country, they still rest Serbs, and that is very important. They could help not only Serbia, but as well to other force. And I, I met Serbs in, very po in any country, in positive movement, an alternative movement. I, it's almost necessary. There is some Serbs that participated fully <laughs> in Sweden, in Germany, in Austria. Uh, that is a good sign. So uh, th that is a kind of health of the people. Living in the West, being the part of the Western society, Serbs can conserve identity.
identity and find the way to, to, to work correctly to be in correct current movement and current situation current situation so and I, I am sure that in the United States the same the same so serves very well and as well exilic identity uh, stressed by Tsarnansky maybe as well uh, helps the sort to of conserve identity outside of Serbia for example I have remarked that Russian we we are losing almost completely our identity outside of Russia. We could not exist without our Earth. So Russian outside of Russia is not anymore Russian. Uh, Serbian outside of Serbia is quite Serbian. <laughs> so I, uh, once I was invited to the Sweden by Serbs, I uh, was met in the airport with Rakia, uh, with uh, all the other. Uh, we passed all the Sweden up to Göteborg, and I didn't see one Sweden man, <laughs> only Serbs uh, singing Tamo Daleko with Rakia, very friendly, very, uh, very open. Uh, so uh, that was a ki kind of little Serbia in any, in any places, in uh, little towns with the friends, with the uh, uh, um, Serbian speech. It was very, very delightful. For us, because we, uh, and, uh, we it is impossible and unimaginable with Russian. Russian, when the Russian are in other country, they try to imitate immediately. French, Sweden, they disappear in Russian. They were, they have maybe kind of remorse to the Russian. So it is uh, quite different, uh, quite different historical experience. So maybe yes, we will. Mm -hmm. We will uh, finish now, if you agree. Mm -hmm. And this is not something official, but uh, we made kind of uh, diploma for everyone who attended the, the course last October. And uh, since we...